Good morning. Today is Sunday, the 26th of July, 2020. Good news to report. No one from the congregation is in the hospital and there has been no death. The Wednesday Bible study continues at 12 noon. You are invited to join us. We are reflecting on chapter 12 of the Acts of the Apostles. Saturday worship continues at 7, followed by a fellowship hour. Sunday school at 9.30, only for adults, and the worship service Sunday at 10.45. There is only nursery supervision on Saturdays. It is good that you are here and you have a good week. Good morning, boys and girls. Within a few weeks, you're going to be returning to school. And of course, it's unclear how that is all going to happen. If you're going to continue to be online, if you'll be in a classroom, or it's going to be a combination of both. But of course, when we return to school, we make use of books. Now, in modern times, we have the convenience that information from books you can get on a computer, but there's still great importance with books. What I want to share with you are the five most important books in my life. And of course, we're going to begin with the Bible. And when I was a teenager, I had a Bible, and I read the Bible from cover to cover several times when I was in high school. And the first Bible words that I ever committed to memorization from Luke chapter 2, the story of the angel appearing to the shepherds of Bethlehem. All right, so the Bible is not only important to us as a Christian to learn about God and Jesus and, and how we do church, but also it's importance to the entire world. Art, painting, music, how we do things in society are heavily dependent upon the Bible. So. I can't stress enough to you, have a Bible, start learning the Bible, read the Bible, because it's going to be valuable to you in many ways over your life. Right, so the Bible that I'm sharing with you, when I became a reverend, when I was ordained by a bishop, a bishop and he put hands on my head, this is the Bible that was presented to me. The second most important book is the hymnal. And we sing songs in church, and we love the music of the church, and when we look at a hymnal, we're looking at songs that span the centuries. There's hundreds, some of them over a thousand years old, coming from many cultures, and from people in other countries who love the Lord as we do. And much of the language, the words in our hymns, are taken from the Bible. 
All right, so we all love music, and it has a way of speaking to us and helping us. All right, so learn the hymnal. Appreciate your hymnal. And just as you have favorite songs at Christmas time, and we have songs that we sing at Easter, there are songs that we sing all the time, and people all over the world join us in praising the Lord. But you can see that this book is kind of falling apart, and I've used it quite a bit. This is a prayer book, and when you're a reverend, you have ceremonies in the church, like for a bride and a groom when they get married, or or when a person dies and you have a funeral for that person, there are different things that you say and that you read. And you can see this book, and also it has many beautiful prayers. And one way that we can learn how to pray is to read the prayers of other people. So the third most important book in my life has been the prayer book. And then this is one of many. It's a commentary on the Bible, and I have shelves and shelves, and they're all different. Now, this is an African Bible commentary, and that the people who put this book together are from Africa. They are Christians and scholars, and what they do, they'll take a verse in the Bible, and they tell us what it means. So you can see here, uh, they've taken a Bible verse, people don't understand it, and they write about it, what, what it says, what what we believe that God wanted it to be understood to mean, and what it means to us today. So this is a Bible commentary. It is commenting or making discussion about verses in the Bible. And the last book that I'm gonna share with you is called A Concordance. Now, many of you learned for memorization contest, John 3.16. All right, which means that I, if I wanted to find those words in the Bible, I would turn to the Gospel of John, then I would have to go to chapter 3, then I would have to go down a column and find verse 16, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. All right, so let's say that I'm a person, and I, I know that verse is in there, but I don't know that it's John 3:16. So what I would have to do, this is like a dictionary, a concordance. It has almost every single word in the Bible listed in alphabetical order where to find it. All right, so we're going to look up the word love. God loved the world. So, so we look up the word love, then it tells you everywhere where love is to be found, and then it tells you here in a column, John 3.16, for God so loved. All right, so this is called a concordance. And you use it all the time to help you find Bible verses because there are so many verses in the Bible. And of course, some people, they have committed parts of the Bible to memorization. So the five most important books in my life have been the Bible, the hymnal, the prayer book, Bible commentaries, and a concordance. And if you were in church today, what you would have received is a little gift. A Christmas ornament with five books. Hope you're having a good day, and we will see you next weekend. Thank you. The Word of God, as found in the book of Revelation, chapter 20, verses 11 through 15, in chapters 21 and 22, from the King James Version, dramatically presented by Dr. Alan Mosher. And the Lord God of the holy prophets sent his angel to show unto his servants the things which must shortly be done. Behold, I come quickly. Blessed is he that keepeth the sayings of the prophecy of this book. I, John, saw these things and heard them. And when I had heard and seen, I fell down to worship before the feet of the angel which showed me these things. Then saith he unto me, See thou do it not, for I am thy fellow servant, and of thy brethren the prophets, and of them that keep the sayings of this book. Worship God. And he saith unto me, Seal not the sayings of the prophecy of this book, for the time 
is at hand. He that is unjust, let him be unjust still. And he which is filthy, let him be filthy still. And he that is righteous, let him be righteous still. And he that is holy, let him be holy still. And behold, I come quickly, and my reward is with me, to give every man according as his work shall be. I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end, the first and the last. Blessed are they that do his commandments, that they may have right to the tree of life, and may enter in through the gates into the city, for without are dogs and sorcerers and whoremongers, and murderers, and idolaters, and whosoever loveth and maketh a lie. I, Jesus, have sent my angel to testify unto you these things in the churches. I am the root and the offspring of David, and the bright and morning star. And the spirit and the bride say, Come. And let him that heareth say, Come. And let him that is athirst come. And whosoever will, let him take the water of life freely. For I testify unto every man that heareth the words of the prophecy of this book, If any man shall add unto these things, God shall add unto him the plagues that are written in this book. And if any man shall take away from the words of the book of this prophecy, God shall take away his part out of the book of life, and out of the holy city, and from the things which are written in this book. He which testifieth these things saith, Surely I come quickly. Amen. Even so come, Lord Jesus. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ with you all. Amen. This is the word of the Lord. During my 47 years in the pastorate, this is the first sermon I have ever delivered on the grand finale of the Book of Books, known as the epilogue, verses 6 through 21, wrap up the previous contents of the Book of Revelation. Some Christians hesitate to take up and read Revelation for its bizarre symbolism and esoteric imagery scares the heebie-jeebies out of them. The 22 chapters with 404 verses are a revelation from Jesus Christ. Chapter 1, verse 3 promises a special blessing to the individual who commits himself to read this prophetic scroll. No doubt you are familiar with the Sermon on the Mount, chapters 5, 6, and 7 of Matthew. Our grand teacher introduced his Magna Carta of Christianity with the Beatitudes. Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are they that mourn, for they shall be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth, and so on. When the resurrected Christ appeared to the doubting Thomas in the upper room, he pronounced in John 20, 29, what is commonly called the last beatitude. Blessed are they that have not seen and yet have believed. This is an incorrect designation. The book of Revelation finds seven blessings the Lord seeks to bestow on us, known as the Beatitudes of Revelation. Stated earlier, 1-3, Blessed is he that readeth those things which are written at hand. 14-13, Blessed are the dead which die in the Lord, they may rest from their labors, and their works do follow them. 16-15, Behold, I come as a thief. Blessed is he that watcheth. 19.9. Blessed are they which are called unto the marriage supper of the Lamb. 26. Blessed and holy is he 
that hath part in the first resurrection. 22.7 Blessed is he that keepeth the sayings of the prophecy of this book. 22.14 Blessed are they that do his commandments, that they may have the right to the tree of life, and may enter in through the gates into the city. So blessings await us in the book of Revelation. At the time of the 9-11 attack on America, Bruce Wilkinson had a bestseller, The Prayer of Jabez. He shared with the nation this story. A Mr. Jones died, he went to heaven. St. Peter gave him a tour of the New Jerusalem. An enormous warehouse was located in paradise. No windows and one door. Mr. Jones was curious to find out what was in the structure, and St. Pete claimed, you really don't want to know. The new arrival couldn't understand why there would be any secret in heaven. This must be an incredible surprise awaiting all outside. Well, after the official tour of the pearly gates, the streets of gold on the crystal sea, Jones pushed St. Peter to take him to the warehouse. Passing through the door were shelves as far as the eye could see, from floor to ceiling, with row after row of neatly stacked white boxes with red ribbons. All these boxes had names on them, said the apostle. Do I have one, said Mr. Jones? Yes. And he dashed to the J aisle to find his box. Ripping open the lid, Jones emitted a big sigh. There Mr. Jones saw all the blessings God wanted to give him when on earth. He never prayed for them, so the answers were never delivered. Please approach the book of Revelation as blessings awaiting you. With the worsening pandemic, economic meltdown, political chaos, civil unrest, cultural disintegration, violence, and crime. This past week at the Bible study, a person offered what gave him hope during this time of universal turbulence was a promise in Revelation 3.10. The Lord Jesus spoke to the church of Philadelphia because you have kept my command to persevere. I also will keep you during the hour of trial, which shall come upon the whole earth to test those who dwell on the earth. So this fellow found a contentment and a peace from this promise of scripture. And there are blessings awaiting all of us. Close to the end of the chapter, we are warned that anyone tampering with the recorded vision, John the Apostle, Exod, on the island of Patmos, wrote down by dictation that the individual making addition or deletion is to be singled out for a divine whammy. Some commentators limit this stern alert just to the book of Revelation. Other scholars extend it to the entirety of the Holy Scriptures, Genesis through Revelation. A young college student gave his heart to the Lord and started carrying a Bible under his arm around the campus. A professor scoffed, boy, you can't believe that nonsense about the seven days of creation, Adam and Eve and Noah's Ark and the flood. It's all mythology. And the prof proceeded to rip out from the good book the 50 chapters of Genesis. A faculty grabbed hold of the Bible, alleging that the 10 plagues of Egypt were the equivalent of ethnic cleansing, and that the God of Moses should be tried as a war criminal. Snatching the Bible from Joe College's hand, the teacher tore out Exodus. A liberal feminist made known that she did not like some of the writings of the Apostle Paul. He was a male chauvinist. Taking a razor blade, the women's liber cut out all the passages from the epistles she labeled as offensive. After some time, with each group 
editing the Bible to conform to their political correctness think tank, all the materials deemed unacceptable to modern sensitivities were expunged from the book. The guy was seen walking around the campus with just two covers. His Bible had been shredded. Mr. T of the A-Team, now in ministry, was prone to say, I pity the fool, I pity the fool. And we need to pity the fool who does not heed the counsel, if any man shall add unto or take away from the words of the book of this prophecy, God shall add unto him the plagues. So let us show caution. Is it possible that why we are seeing the demise of our society is because of the widespread rejection of the Word of God and that we are forever adding and subtracting from its truth and values? Mary Did You Know by Kenny Rogers is a very popular Christmas song. The last question made to the mother of the Lord, Mary, did you know that the child you are holding is the great I am? The Lord God disclosed his identity to Moses from the burning bush as I am who I am, or the great I am. The Gospel of John records our Lord Jesus disclosing himself on seven occasions with a preface, I am, indicating his supreme deity. I am the bread of life. I am the light of the world. I am the door. I am the good shepherd. I am the resurrection and the life. I am the way, the truth and the life. I am the vine. The use of I am spoken by Christ appears over and over in Revelation. You heard 2213, I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end, the first and the last. The exalted Lord made the same statement in 1.8, 1.11, 1.17, 21.6, 21, how many times does the Son of God have to say it before it sinks in. For the contemporary apostates who charged that Jesus of Nazareth was just a simple carpenter and an itinerant preacher and that his later followers at ecclesiastical councils took a vote and invented the Trinity and conferred deity upon him, their claim is what we call fake news. They don't know what they're talking about. Here in Revelation, an original source document for Christianity, the founder of our religion makes himself equal to God the Father, calling himself the Alpha Omega, beginning and the first and last. The infidel can deny the divinity of Christ and even falsely suspect that John the author put these words in Jesus' mouth. But there can be no dismissal of the evidence that the first century Christians upheld that Jesus Christ has a divine nature. The Through the Bible radio broadcast teacher J. Vernon McGee observed, from an alphabet you make words. And Jesus Christ is called the Word of God, the full revelation, and intelligent communication of God. He is the only alphabet we can use to reach God. Alpha is the first and Omega the last letters in the Greek alphabet. The modern day equivalency, Jesus Christ is everything from A to Z. R.C. Sproul shared that he had attended a seminar and the keynote speaker as the main talk listed all the titles, metaphors, and types associated with the Lord. There are over 700. A. Advocate, Anointed One, 
apostle, author and finisher of our faith, ancient of days. B, the beloved, branch of David, the bridegroom, the bright and morning star. C, captain of our salvation, counselor, city of refuge, chosen of God, consolation. On and on we could go. This room could be wallpapered with the titles of the King of Kings, Jesus, name above all names. Superstar Celine Dion climbed to the top of the international hit parade in 1996 with Because You Love Me. The Grammy award-winning song of the year has also been performed by Christian recording artists who apply the lyrics to our Savior and Lord Jesus. Jesus, you were my strength when I was weak. You were my voice when I couldn't speak. You were my eyes when I couldn't see. You saw the best there was in me. Lord, you lifted me up when I couldn't reach. You gave me faith because you believed in me. I'm everything I am because you loved me. Is this what Jesus Christ is to you? Is he A to Z, the Alpha and the Omega, the attorney, the banker, the counselor, the doctor, the educated? A little girl wore a shiny cross around her neck. Approached by a man, he inquired, Honey, did you know that Jesus died on a cross, but it wasn't beautiful like the one you're wearing? It was an ugly wooden torture stake. After thinking for a minute, the child smiled and answered, I was taught in Sunday school, whatever Jesus touches, he changes, and it becomes beautiful and valuable. For the second time in Revelation, while overcome by the vision, John knelt in worship before an angel who was acting as his escort. And for the second occasion, John was reprimanded by the angel and told, get up. God alone is to be afforded this homage. Recall, Satan, when tempting Jesus and the devil, tempting Jesus in the wilderness, questioned the Lord if he would kneel before him and as the grand prize, receive all the kingdoms of the world and their glory. Bad and fallen angels seek to be worshipped. Billy Graham identified angels as God's invisible secret agents. And as created celestial beings, they serve him in heaven and on earth. An answer supplied as to why our guardian angels do not materialize and that we never see them or directly experience and make contact with them is to diminish the possibility that we could be deflected from our worship of God and give too much attention to the angel. Verse 17, And the Spirit and the Bride say, Come, and let him that heareth say, Come, and let him that is a thirst come, and whosoever will, let him take the water of life freely. This is the final invitation in the Bible for one to come in faith to Christ and to receive him as Savior and Lord. Ninety-three times in the New Testament we find whosoever will, implying that anyone and everyone that possesses a spiritual thirst and takes the time to listen is invited, free of charge, to come and receive the full cup quenching of his or her soul. In a Peanuts comic by Charles Schulz, Sally was struggling with her memory verse at Sunday school. Absorbed in her thoughts, trying to figure out where the verse was located, the light bulb went on. She remembered, maybe it was something from the book of re-evaluation. Sally did not find the memory verse, but she could always read the Bible and its book of Revelation with the intention of re-evaluation. And we need to approach 
the book a revelation to reevaluate our attitudes and actions and are they in line with the full counsel of Christ. 2 Corinthians 6 2. Behold, now is the accepted time. Behold, now is the day of salvation. And Jeremiah 8 20. The harvest is past, the summer is ended, and we are not saved. George Sweeting was a former president of the Moody Bible Institute. From his research, Sweeting found that more than one fourth of the Bible is predictive prophecy, with 1,800 references in the Old Testament, 17 of the 39 books in the Old Testament give a prominence to prophecy. Of the 260 chapters in the New Testament, 300 references are attached to Christ's second coming, which means one out of every 30 verses. 23 of the 27 New Testament books make mention of the second advent. This means that for every prophecy anticipating the first coming of Christ, eight address his second coming. As Christ died on the cross, the four gospels inform us that the suffering Savior spoke a total of seven times. And collectively, these sayings are known as the seven last words of Jesus. They were his seven last words before his death. Other traditions earmark the Great Commission in Matthew 28, Go you therefore and teach all nations as his last word. And this is a wrong label. The last recorded utterance spoken by Christ is next to the last verse of Revelation. Surely I come quickly. This is the third time the returning judge, Jesus Christ, made the announcement. Verse 7, Behold, I come quickly. 12, And behold, I come quickly. And 20, Surely, I come quickly. And the response of John was, Maranatha. It is likely that you have seen the Aramaic Greek word, Maranatha, on billboards or bumper stickers, and it means, even so come. Jesus says, surely I come, and John responds, even so come. And with eager expectation, as a bride awaiting the coming of the bridegroom. In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. The first verse of the Bible, Genesis 1.1. And the very last word, Revelation 22, 21, the Bible ends with a brief prayer. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. Amen. God's grace is spelled G-R-A-C-E. God's redemption at Christ's expense. Whenever we are at a prayer meeting, and we say, Amen, we are agreeing to that prayer. So be it, may it come to pass. And with the last word in the Bible, Amen, so it will come to pass. Christ will return in glory, King of kings and Lord of lords. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen.